No music, though. Um. Alright, so the boys, little boys can't play, so we're having a shopping session where they're getting ready to head out on their adventure, and they just wanted to double check their equipment and potentially hire some friends or some help, and uh, this is probably going to be boring to watch, but it, that way it's at least documented as part of the campaign. Because it is going to be important, depending on what you guys choose to do. So, when we left off last time, you guys were just survived the trial by combat. McCorgle and Atro, 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 uh, made friends with the party and decided to adventure with them. Um, Laszlo and. Uh, Tome. Yeah, they're getting ready to head out. They were just packing their things and getting ready to head out of the town and go back to Winley Manor. Um, and then you guys were going to try to plan your next go, which I believe was going to be back out to the mountains to the hobgoblins who attacked you. Mm -hmm. So, you gave me this. Mm -hmm. So, this you wanted to sell. Looks like you had a, a nice emerald. A yeah, nice emerald and, and this is some things that you wanted to buy. Yeah. And yeah. this is, what is your, how are you tracking your party fund? Where's your party so, fund? So, <coughs> the party fund, we had, uh, we already had money in here. Um, we already had some gold as well. So, the party fund is basically, he's got a big sack that's got all their stuff in it. That, that way we don't have to distribute it and write it on the kids' sheets. The kids have their basic stuff. But most of the stuff they find, he just throws in his sack. So maybe between the two of you, you can carry all this. Because Probably. Because he's like the pack mule. Yeah. yeah. That's why I can only move The two good squares. thing is, yeah. if you hire people, then you don't have to worry about that so much. You can just leave most of it at the camp. Um, so, this number here, 1,130 gold pieces, mm -hmm. is all of this together? Is is the gold pieces right here, the party fund, and then the individual gold that we have. So, we have individual so between between you guys, so you, this money includes the money that Atch or that Trowbridge had on him. So you took that yeah. money and added it here. Yeah, added it to the party fund, and then we all had our, our own amount. Um, like I had 180 gold, um, and then I believe we took um, Hayden's gold as well and added to it. Then you did, did you delete it off of this sheet? No, I haven't. I haven't done any of that yet because um, we haven't okay. gone there. So yet, here, so. if you wanna take, some, they're not gonna be happy if you take it. Well, you can't. Uh, they won't know. Oh, Atro doesn't really have anything. He's got twenty gold, so you might as well just keep his. So if he's got anything there, and you put it wherever, whatever you do, it can only be in one spot. Yeah. Because you can't duplicate it. So if you, if you're gonna hold it, it needs to go here. And and realistically, what I'll do. Where's your new character sheet right here? There you go. Well, cause, so what you I did on there was I just added it all together. I haven't moved anything yet. It was just, so was this is talking. everything on here? Uh, everything on... Th all this stuff right here is mine. Is, is Your in, personal is stuff. My personal stuff. Yeah, so it's not, well. it's not on here. No, it's not included on okay, here. Okay, what I'll do is I'll it, I'll make you a sheet that's called Party Fund. And yeah. I'll, I'll organize it out like this. And you can have weapons, armor, blah, blah, blah. That way you can yeah. keep your Party Fund organized. Yeah, because the only thing that, that was here was like... was this, Some of this stuff was from like my old guy. And then um, some notes like if I get a horse and go 40 miles a day. But really, the only thing we have in the, the party fund besides the gold is one longsword uh, plus one attack of damage of heroes and pot and a map. That's it. Well, you gave, you gave the longsword to Atro, didn't Atro. you? Atro. Um, so, because he's got a longsword plus one, so you can delete that and you don't have that one anymore. So the heroes and pot and the map as well. So, so I don't really have that much stuff in the party. Fund. Yeah. So the party. F so you don't have any armor or any no, bits or treasures you found or anything. No, nothing miscellaneous in there. No. And but you have the the gems. Yes, which I, I ended up erasing because that's what I put on the. Um, so you have that. Yeah. No, I, I erased it because that's what I put on the cell list, basically. Okay. Okay. So you have you guys between everybody. They have approximately 1,100 gold, plus uh, he wants to see about selling a 
nice emerald gem that they had found, which potentially is worth a lot of money. So, and an onyx. And you can onyx. So those gems, a lot of times you have a hard time finding. Well, I'll let you guys figure it out yourself. You gotta role play it. So I'll get my I'll get my map out. So they have a. You show him your map. This is my master. So this is the town. The north gate. Actually, I changed there. So this is, I'll give you Megan. So this is the town of Bittershire where you guys are actually at. That's the tavern that you guys go to a lot. And they've met a bunch of these. These numbers correlate to the back here. And as they explore and figure out what the buildings are, he writes down what the buildings are. That way they can go back if they need more stuff from there. So they don't know what all the they haven't explored much of the town, but they know some of it. Yeah. So they've met some people and they kind of know who does what, but there's also a lot more to be found. But um. So let me get my book here just in case. Okay. So what's your first plan of action? What do you guys want to do? So I'll assume the boys are hanging out at the town and you two are going out to handle some business. You guys are the the wise clerics of the group, um, the brains of the group. Yes, yes. The <laughs> other two are just fighters. Blood, so blood hungry mongols, yes. <laughs> so, what do the two um, clerics want to do? You guys can discuss this amongst yourselves and then tell me what you want to do. We'll role play it. Oh, can I see the. Yes, uh, sticky note for sticky time. How do I do it? I know it's some others. <laughs> I don't know. Sure. So, I think you guys can do it in character. So, I think we should go, Grampinator. I think we should go yeah, to. McGorgle. McGorgle. Oh, I think we should go to the blacksmith first and think about selling the gems. The emerald and the nice emerald and the onyx. What do you think? So that way we can get more money and then plan out what we want to buy, where we need to go. Let's see what that sucker's worth. We don't have anybody that has the knowledge greater than the blacksmith to do this. Um, not that I've discovered. So, for 4A, for the 4 area, we've got the nice the uh, miscellaneous smith. We've got the... Uh, uh, him and the weapon, weapon and armor smith, and we have Nessa who does the horseshoes, and then she's a crafter. So they've met two different blacksmiths. One of them does general tool work and stuff like that. The other one's an armorer and weapon smith. So one of them's for their combat goods. One of them just is for like horseshoes. You yeah. Know. So, so we really haven't broke out anybody from the town that could help us with jewelry that's... Well, I do believe last time we did sell to the blacksmith as well. The, not the armorer, but the general goods one. <clears throat> he does deal with some uh, gems, and they have been able to sell gems to the, the tax man and to the bankers, the guys with a little bit of money. Yeah, there's, we there's some bankers, and there's a tax man in town. They sold some stuff to them last time. But also, the, the one blacksmith does like gems as well. Problem is when you get a gem that's too so big, they can't really afford. It. So like so this is a tiny little town, so they only have so much cash. Yeah. So that's why they ended up going to the banker and the tax man. But, yeah. They got a little bit of what numbers with those? Because I yeah. them right now. I guess. Uh, Frank's goods, general stands. The tax collector is twelve A. Twelve A. And the banker is twelve C. I'm guessing. No. So, so the tax collector is 12A, mm -hmm. um, and the banker is 10. Ten of the banker. Yeah. Um, from last time, but that, that one we kind of did off screen. Yeah. So the banker that you met last time is uh, named uh, Allent, A L E N T, and uh, he's a big, strong fellow. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and he's got a couple sons that help him manage the business, and they also are like 24 7 guards. So he's got a couple real strong sons that kind of uh, keep an eye on things and whatnot. So he basically works out of his house. He's got an office out to the side. <coughs> um, he does small petty loans and stuff like that, but he's not made of money. But he's got, he's better off than most people in the town. The tax collector works for the Lord, obviously, and helps collect the uh, uh, fealty taxes and stuff. Um, he's got a little bit of money. Um, his name is Gilliam. The G. Gilliam. He's a 12A. Um, keeps up the local trade, land taxes. Um, yeah, that's you. So you kind of know them from before. Okay. The um. Yeah, but besides that, uh, there's no real specific um, like jeweler, yeah. jeweler that you guys know of. But we have two bankers. Yeah, the banker, tax man, and a and a um, and a blacksmith who like that stuff. I need to find a uh, page for the values. What did I write on there? So it's a nice emerald. A nice emerald and onyx, yeah. Okay. Between those. Uh, the prime jewel, we're not going to be able to get enough for. So we have to look at the rest of what we have and find out some kind of a reasonable figure that we need to get. Mm -hmm. out of that. So, of the people that you know, the other banker or the blacksmiths, which one do you think is more apt to give us what we need to the amount that would be in your head? Well, I have um, plus one to um, merchant. I'm a merchant, so I have a close one to that, so yeah. my, my prices are um, a lot better. So I can get more money for stuff and spend less so money. So your background profession is an alchemist, so you can make minor potions and stuff, or you can like find herbs and stuff that you might, may or may not be able to use. Um, he's, he, his background was a merchant. He used to be a merchant, so he's good at talking and bartering, yeah. so he's able to get a little bit better prices sometimes. Yeah. Um, now keep in mind, even though they might not have the cash, if you're making a big purchase, potentially that gem could be used as a trade, as a straight monetary item. Okay. So even though they might not be able to give you straight coin for it, if they have something worth that much, you could trade potentially. It depends on what you're trying to do. Um, so I have an idea how much that thing's worth. So just tell me what you guys want to do. All right. Well. Maybe we should go to the stable and try to see if we can like see how much it's going to cost for a horse and a uh, um, and a uh, cart for at least like at least two horses. Do we have to get a pony for him? Right, the dwarf rides a pony. Okay, so see see about getting a horse and a pony and see if we can trade for that or at least how much it's going to cost us. See what's going to be. I also don't know how much horses. I can't remember. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. So who do you want to go? Find it? Okay, so did you want to go to the fairy or you already knew? Oh, the horse, the her horse lady? Farrier, yeah. So the farrier is uh, someone who watches up, like, uh, does horseshoes, basically yeah. like a vet. And you guys know her from before. She, yeah. she does minor veterinary work for the town. And that's alright. Yeah, and yeah. she generally keeps an eye on <coughs> some, some horses. Um, so you go to her. Yeah. Alright, so she's at 4A. Uh, 4C. 4A is miscellaneous. Right. Right. That's right. Okay. She says, uh, well, Welcome back, Sir Cleric. I don't believe I've met you, short one. <laughs> um, I. Uh, Godfrey, my I'm a cleric. Oh. 
and I'm dwarf. visiting dwarf. Yes, dwarf. sir dwarf, master dwarf, cleric. Two holy men come to my doorstep. What can I serve you? How can I serve you? Uh, we would like to go about seeing about maybe purchasing a pony for myself. I mean, a pony for my friend here and a horse for myself. Hmm. You've come to the wrong place. But I might be able to help point you in the right direction. Great I'm so. a good vet. And I do uh, take care of the help uh, take care of the horses in town. Um, you need to probably go see the stables um, at 23. Um, I can walk you over there. I'm not actually doing too much right now. So she, you guys walk down the road uh, to the stables okay. at 23. Yep. And. Um, So she comes up and there's a couple uh, young young boys kind of hanging out at the stables. There's a, there's a few horses in there. Not not many, maybe two or three full-size horses, a pony or two um, that you can see. And uh, he sa she says, um, so this is Fred. He runs the stables. Um, if you need to... Uh, to purchase something, some some animals, you might want to talk to him. Uh, and he waves him over and uh, says, oh, "This is my friend um, Corbin yeah, and McGorgle, yeah, okay. uh, holy men, looking for horses for their adventure." He says, "Oh, nice to meet you. <coughs> what are you looking for?" Uh, we are seeking to purchase a horse from me and a pony from my friend here, and potentially a wagon. As well. Okay, I might be able to help you out with the horses, but the wagon, I'll have to point you in another direction. Right. Let's see what I have for horses. So, uh, are you looking for a war horse, a draft horse? What are you looking for? Hmm. What will be the price for a war horse? And what are the benefits of having a war horse? Okay. Well, I have a draft. I, I have one war horse on hand. It's going to be about. 225 gold. Um, it's a strong horse, um, able to charge into battle. Um, uh, is well trained. Well trained, won't get spooked as easy. Um, and then I have a few draft horses. They're going to run you about 125. Um, and, you know, you're, you're going to probably want to buy a, a hood for them so they don't get spooked. If you run across some danger, they might be. Uh, scared and might flee, but uh, usually if you buy a cow for them, they're fine, they don't spook, but uh, they're not obviously geared, you're not going to want to ride them uh, into battle, of course. Um, and then, of course, I have some riding horses. Now, keep in mind, those draft horses are strong, they, they can pull wagons. If you want to get wagons, and you're going to pull wagons, you're going to want a draft horse, probably. Uh, they're trained to pull the carts, they're trained to be led. Uh, but if you just want a simple riding horse, I have them as well. They come much cheaper. Uh, they're going to be about 80 gold. And you said how many war horses do you have? Just, I have just one war one? horse on hand. This fine baby right here, and he slaps on a button. It's a big, solid black war horse. Real strong, muscular. Alrighty. Um, and how many of the draft horses do you have? Two, you said? Yeah, I think I have two in right now. I've been working one of them up since there's a little young one. And uh, what about a pony as well? Do you have any ponies for my friend here? Mm. Ponies. Um, let's see if he's got a pony. All zeros? <laughs> Definitely got a pony. He's got two ponies. <laughs> <laughs> well, well today's our use them as the draft. Right? Well, so I got two pony horse. So I got two ponies. Those are going to be his, my rates on the ponies. I got uh, a pony for uh, 50. And even, I even have, you guys do some good talking here. I even have a war pony in the back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which, if you can imagine, a war horse or war pony does the same thing, just on a smaller stature. Mm. That one will be 90. Yeah. Mm. 
right. You've come at the right time. I have good stock. Hmm. Doobies. Uh, we want to look at purchasing possibly a war horse, two drafts, two draft horses, and one pony from our good friend here. Two draft, one war, one, one war. war, and one war, one war pony. One war pony. No, no. What about riding horses? For the other guys, or, or what do you... Would the lackeys be able to ride on the draft horses? Well, the draft horses are meant to pull carts, so you... No, but not right we rent it all, so they would, like, they yeah, would do it. Okay. They, you pack your gear on them, so okay. usually the pack... The, let me, uh, double-check how they Because I want to get a horse for everybody, and at least, like, one or two horses so you to have, go. Uh, this stuff is in here, so okay. we'll look at the equipment section. What are you going to say, Grant? I'm going to get the list of you guys. It had something to do with <coughs> <coughs> how big of a cart are we looking for here so we get an idea of weight. Um, I'm just going to say like a medium-sized cart, enough to carry some people and, and some supplies. All right, that sounds good. So we're looking for a medium-sized cart. Yeah. So we'll need to know what the cost of that are. Yeah. Well, I hear you guys discuss some carts. If you want to figure out what kind of cart or wagon you guys want to buy, you might want to go talk to that first to see what uh, kind of horse you're going to need to pull it, or how many. So, uh, if you want to go discuss that over at, um... He's got the 35. All the way down here. Uh, 35. You get over there, he points you down there. Um, there's a freight service called uh, VM Wagons and Couriers, and you're greeted by two brothers named Martin and Vance. And uh, let's see. all right, so they uh, they, they, they greet you in Martin, Mar Vance. Martin, Martin and Vance. Vance. VM Wagons and Couriers is their business. You can see that this is a business front here. They have, uh, they have a, like a barn with some some stuff in there. Um, they say, uh, "Greetings, friends. What can we do for you?" Yes, we're looking to go about purchasing a medium-sized wagon and see about how many draft horses we're going to need in order to pull. Where are you uh, headed? Many adventures to the to the woods, to the swamps, and to the mountains. Claw well, mountains. Every mountain you can think of. But first. We're going closer to Claw Mountain. Been a while since I've seen a dwarf back in town. Good to see you. Good thank honorable you. folk. Yes, thank you. What, uh, what brings you to the mountains? Are you guys crazy right now? Have you heard the tales of what's going on in the Claw Mountains? What's going on, pray tell, in the Claw Mountains? Oh, you got hobgoblins and orcs and bugbears. Ah, uh, yes, we've already encountered the uh, hobgoblins. That That is actually our next stop, is to go and decimate the hobgoblin cave. Have you heard of the gnolls? The gnolls. The lizard men in the swamps? No. no That's the cool These thing. gnolls are eight foot tall hyena men. Mm. And they run the mountaintops, the ridges. You find yourselves too high in the mountains, you're coming across gnolls. You better be careful. All right. But, if you're buying carts, you're not going to want to get anywhere near the mountains. You won't be able to navigate those trails That's out there. But that means we have to lose a person to stay where we have to leave them. Well, that's what the lackeys are for. That's what that's what the mercenaries are for. The hirelings. Yeah, the hirelings. Well, they'll stay at the base of the mountain with the wagon and all that stuff. And when we're in the cave, if we lose the HP, we need to get out. We can just run back to camp and stay for a couple days and then go back up. There's your map. So th these are the Claw Mountains yeah. that he's referring to. You guys are in town here. Yeah. That's the main road, yeah. and that's the trail they've been taking up. Yeah, uh, and you guys somewhere in here yeah. is where we're going to wind up having to leave yeah. it. And you know that there's a goblin tribe here, because uh, Laszlo, you guys ran into them a couple times in this area, but you've never pinpointed where they were at. Yeah. But Laszlo and Tome confirmed that the dot that you have on your map is their cave. Okay. So you know that there's a goblin tribe there. So we might have to take so the goblins first. So we can't go up any further than here for safety 
to wherever that cave is. And we have to take it out before we can move yeah. the card up any closer. So I guess we'll have to just come up here, probably stop right up here at the edge of the trail where the trail ends, take out the goblins, and then we'll be able to not have to worry so much about that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Under the area and make camp. That, yeah. should, that should secure any come around behind us. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Um, so, he says, if you guys are planning your map here, uh, he's like, yeah, you uh, you shouldn't have any problem on that trail. I used to do some hunting out there back when I was a kid. Uh, those pines there, relatively all right. That trail, I haven't been out there in years. I don't know the condition of that trail, but back when I used to hunt, I used to use that trail. You should be able to get up in there with the wagons, no problem. Uh, you might just need to clear the road and smooth it out in front of you if it gets too too rocky, but road you should be fine, you just gotta be careful of them brigands. You know, you've been hearing tales of them bandits and brigands ambushing people on the road. It's bad mm -hmm. business. Yeah. So. Um, so let me show you what I got. So he's got carts. So a cart, basically here you go. So this is what he's got. He's got basically anything you want in here, so you don't want a chariot. But you got a coach, a wagon, a carriage, and a cart. So, I'll, uh, I'll just read it to you. So, a cart is a small two-wheeled vehicle pulled by a horse. There's enough room for two people in their traveling gear. No good. Too small. A carriage is a private coach with room for one or two passengers with the driver on the bench in front and a footman guard riding at the boot in the boot. So that's like a full, like, uh, fancy, like, carriage, enclosed thing. Yeah. Uh, a wagon is a large vehicle used to transport goods from farms into towns and or to transfer, transport all a family's possessions across the frontier. A wagon is pulled by a team or a pair of horses or oxen. The sides of the wagon are four to six foot high. Mm -hmm. A coach is a long-distance vehicle, pulled by four to six horses, hitched in pairs. A coach will be able to sit six people inside and has a bench on the front for a driver and guard if traveling through the wilderness. There is a place for storage of one or two chests per passenger, either on top of the coach or on the boot, located across the back. You guys want to read back to this? So I probably want to go with the wagon. Here, there's, your, there's what you got, how big they are, how much weight they can carry. How fast they can move, and then their price. So there's your prices. You got a coach, wagon, carriage, cart. I think a wagon caught your guys' attention. That'll cost about 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. 500 gold. But it can hear, handle 2,000 pounds. Yeah. Plus, I get a better rate for being a merchant. So, will it still be 500 or will it be a little bit less? <laughs> I see you're uh, interested in my wagon here. This is a fresh. Freshly built. Yes, sir. The finest timber you can find in the area. Uh, see, I only got one, and um, see, I've had some other, I've had some other takers. They're thinking about buying it as well. I'll do it for five eighty. Five eighty. Well, I mean, as like I see here, I mean, I have my money. You're, I know you have other interested parties, but as, as they're not here with the money now, I can give you about four eighty now. 480, my With gold right here. Keep in mind, you guys don't know these values. I'm just giving you yeah. a false yeah. so, uh, You say you got 480 on hand now? I have 480 on hand right now. You got 540 on hand. I do not. Most I have on me right now, I don't carry anything over 500 or 490 I made one time. Okay, so I'll give you a roll um, to see if he'll accept your deal. So, on your character sheet, I have a new thing we're using here on your character sheet. It's called uh, Ability Tests. So, okay. so your Ability Tests, whenever you want to do something that's not really in the rule book, <coughs> it's going to be covered by an Ability Test. So if it's difficult, it's going to be, you're going to need to do that. Like You roll with your gear attached. So this one is going to be a Charisma check, which you don't get a modifier to. So you need to roll a 15 or higher to do that, 18, blah, blah, blah. But you're going to get a plus one for being a merchant. Um, so go ahead and roll a d20 and add one for your merchant skill. Okay. I have 15, 18, and 21. Same as me. He's making the check 
we're using his merchants. He's trying to smooth talk this guy down. Yeah. So. 13 plus, plus one, so I got 14, so. Well, you talk a good game, but uh, I'll do it for 500 if you got it. 500? We'll say you, McCorvel, my newfound friend. Oh. That's right what it's worth. Oh. You got him down to right where it's worth. Oh, come on, boy. Well, you know you like to strike all, a deal. If that's all, with nothing to worry about behind us, that's fine. 500. Let me see. Mm. Ah, yes, 500. Seems in order here, sir. There you go. Seems good enough. It's good doing business with you guys. So you got a horse to pull this. What are you doing with it? We'll be back. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Okay, we'll see you soon, friends. Just, just leave it here for two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> no horses or anything. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll just, well, we'll just throw this up on our hey, back. It was the last one. You know, I had, I had to purchase it, all right? <laughs> Something I needed. Now we're going to go back to, to 230. Uh, okay, so did you erase your 500 off there? Yeah, yeah I'll have 630 left. Great. <laughs> go ahead and delete that off your party fund. Okay, well, so um, have we limited it? Ourself, uh, people and horses. No, well, not horses. We're gonna. Yeah, um, horses. Yeah. The wagon is has to have two horses, I believe. Yeah. Take it. If you're gonna fully, so let me see what that said. Yeah. So a wagon pulled by a team pair. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you're gonna fill that thing up, you're gonna need two. Yeah, so you're going to need two draft horses. Two draft horses, okay. So, yeah, I was right the first time. We're good. That, that's if we fill up until then we can alternate one. Yeah, so you got that thing, the wagon itself can hold 2,000 pounds. Um, I'd say, you know, one one is going to be able, one horse is going to, one draft horse is going to be able to pull about 1,000. Mm -hmm. So to get the full maximum use out of your wagon, you're going to need two. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say just especially add up two in the now. Mouth. Yeah, I was okay. able to get two. So you want two draft horses. Two, yeah, leave everything the same like it is, yeah, with the cows. Or the calves, coifs, calves, whatever. One war horse. One war horse. And then a war pony for One the dwarf. Horse. And then... Uh, That's a little guy. Now what about your fighter friends? What are they going to ride on? Uh, they're going to ride in the wagon. Well, um, I, actually I want to get two, well, yeah, for oh, the other two people, uh, Hayden and them, yeah, um, I would say we can get them a, a riding pony. Get them two riding ponies or riding horses. Well, they're full on riding horses. Yeah, riding so. horses. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna have a wagon. It's two thousand pounds. Um, so that thing's big. So that thing is uh, eight feet wide and thirty-five foot long. Ooh. Thirty-five. Oh, foot. wait a minute. Hold on. I was reading the wrong thing. It weighs two thousand pounds. Hmm. Uh, thirty-five foot includes the. The horses, though, oh, actually. Um, it can hold 4,000 pounds. So you get 2,000 pounds. Uh, that, that's heavy, though. 2,000 pounds. Yeah, you're going to need two horses, for yeah. sure. That thing's heavy. Just that, just the cart weighs 2,000 pounds. So yeah. then you start loading it, you're going to want two horses. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you can actually hold 4,000 pounds with that sucker. Yeah, because I feel we'll put up our, all of our loot in there because, you know, the kids are loot goblins, so they like to take anything they can. So we'll load that in there, and we'll have all the lackeys in there, too, and stuff, so. Yeah. Okay, so that thing's going 4,000 pounds. Um, okay. There's really not, uh, yeah, I guess you could fit. You could fit a few people in the back of that thing. You'd probably fit four people in some stuff. Um, yeah, because we got a gold to supplies. Yeah, I mean, if it's, like 18, if it's like 18 feet, it yeah. It depends how many people you plan to hire, too. So I think four would probably be good. Anyways. Okay, so you come back with your draft horses. Or wait, no, you didn't buy them yet. So you got draft horses. Yeah, two draft horses. War pony, war horse, and then uh, two riding horses. Okay, so you go back to um, what did I say his name was? Martin and Van. Oh, no, Martin and Van. You bought things from yeah. um, Frank. Fred. Fred. That's right. 
You bo go back to uh, Fred. That was number 23, right? Uh, Fred, yeah, 23 stairs. Okay, he says, uh, yeah, I got pretty much whatever you want. Um, so you want to go for one war horse, two draft horses, a war pony, and two riding. So that's going to run you... Say, all right, for those uh, six prime specimens, that's gonna run you. For those six prime time beasts, I'll do uh, six thirty five on them. 635, hmm. Would you mind to take this nice, shiny onyx or this, this, uh, prime gem of an emerald? that emerald? Ah, uh, we went up to the mountains and we cleared out an entire crypt of the undead, and we helped to save this beautiful town, where I think possibly we could work, up, you know, potentially on the prices of these prime specimens because without us saving you, they may not even be here. Tell you what though, my wife has always talked about how much she loved emeralds. I'd sure like to be able to have a nice emerald necklace forged for her. Mm. Maybe this thing could come in use. <laughs> Give me lucky. <laughs> uh, have you had it appraised? Not yet. Well, let's go see how much that thing's worth. I'll bet, uh, um... I think the banker. The banker, yeah. yeah so it goes over the banker, um, and all right, so you said it's a nice... Nice emerald, yeah. Okay, roll percentage, so D100. So on this one... So, uh, the banker says, well, the appraisal is going to cost you five gold. Mm -hmm. um, this is a nice emerald you have here. Use a little bit of touching up, but just the way it sits, I'd say this thing's worth about 500. Five hundred. What about this onyx as well? Ah, okay, well, you know. Eight. Oh, it'll be eighty. No. Zero, zero, eight. So, oh, eight. Mm. Yeah, so this is the tenth Yeah. So that's zero, eight. I like the other way around. Uh, this one. This one's not quite as good. I mean, it's, got, it's pretty rough. It's going to take a lot to clean that thing up. You're probably looking at about twelve gold on that one. Mm. Mm. Now we're play, praise that for free, so you, you can you know, keep the change on that. You go back to uh, Frank, or Fred, and it says, uh, yeah, I don't really want that onyx, but man, what a lucky day on this, this uh, emerald. I'll tell you what, I'll do, uh, I'll take that emerald and... 135 and we'll be all set. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I feel as if your wife would be, would be okay with just the emerald. Well, my wife doesn't run my business, friend. <laughs> she doesn't. But she he... runs my house, but not my business. <laughs> hey, well, happy wife, happy life. Uh, well, she's going to be... Well, no. 
Alright, so I feel like it's a, it's a fair trade. Smooth talking him again, go ahead and roll your merchant. It's bartering skill. <laughs> nope, it's gonna be 635. 635! Oh, good lord. Alright, so you want an extra uh, 135 with it? Yep. Alright, that's I guess, a fair deal. I guess we're gonna have to do it. Starting to get yourselves together here. <laughs> so now you got a cart or a wagon. You got a wagon, a nice sized wagon, two draft horses to hold it. Uh, and they say, you know, you know, have some barding for those. You got a war pony and a war horse. Uh, if you plan to ride them into some danger, you might want to put some barding on them things. Give them some armor. Protect those beasts. And how much would that cost? Well. Uh, let's see what I have here. I don't think I have something that would be able to fit that war horse. Light barding, the leather barding is going to cost you uh, 120. And it'll give an AC bonus of 2 from to that horse. I got some chain mail barding. Cost 400 and that's going to give a plus 4 AC bonus. Or we can go full plate on them suckers. 1200 gold plus 6 AC. There's not a single bugbear out there that's gonna hit that horse. <laughs> two. What are the ones that create the wagon? Draft horses. Yeah, two draft horses. Two draft, one war horse, one war pony, and two riding horses. Um, okay, and how much was the leather again? Leather's 120. The pony is going to be a little less. It'll be about 80 for a pony. And it'll give, uh, so, in the book, so, I have the actual horses in here. So, a horse by itself, um, actually, I think that's a piece of burden section right in the front. Yeah, so, a, whore, a draft horse, uh, no, war horse, has an AC of 13. So, if you got the plus two, it'd have an AC of 15. So without armor, just because they're so sh big and fast, they have a defense of 13 AC. Uh, if you put the leather barding on them, it'd be 15. So if something wants to attack them, they're going to need 15 or higher to hit. That's if you're that's if you're riding these things into battle. But how much you, you might not be doing that. Yeah, because I feel like if we do end up getting attacked, I would just have the lackeys take the horses out of battle. Anyways. Right, so you might not need it, he's just trying and to sell you something. Yeah, no, we need to buy health potions, so we're in lackeys too, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna buy anything else. Okay. Today. Well, it was nice doing business with you. you Come well. back if you need more horses, although I'm gonna probably need to go into Windlay Manor and trade for some more now, because I'm about clean through here. I, I got nothing but poop in these stables now. <laughs> Wembley Manor, huh? Yeah, so Wendley Manor, down, down, down uh, it's, it's a bigger town, but you're, you're in a little village, there's a town yeah. nearby, Wendley Manor, out to the west, if you, if you took this road, mm -hmm. probably 80 miles, uh, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, no, it, might, it might not be 80, but uh, there's a main, mm -hmm. bigger town, it's not a huge town, but, there's more money there. Potentially. Maybe after you clear the values, maybe that's your next stop. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what pops up. Um, alrighty, and so we want to, after this, now we want to go to 5A. We want to go to Slavin, the militia leader, and see about hiring uh, four lackeys. Is that where we hire the people, or do we go to the pub for that? I'm not telling you, you gotta figure it out. So you knock on his door. Um, and he comes out, uh, he opens the door with his shoulder, and he's uh, 
Puff in a nice leather shoe. And when he opens up the front door, you can see on there he's got like a workstation. It looks like he's a cobbler as well as the what militia leader. And, uh, what can I do for you? Um, I saw you guys out there in the square yesterday. Yeah, what we're looking to uh, oh, just, you know, some, some rabble rousers out here trying to accuse us of uh, wrongdoing, which is not something we do. Especially me and my good friend here being clerics. I know me being Father Ambrose's right hand or you know one of his uh, holy disciples, I would never do such a thing. I hope so. I trust in God's I trust in my faith in God that he chose the correct winners of that trial by combat yesterday. It was a bloody affair. Yes, Don't like well, to see that in our town. Unfortunately, it seems like any time adventurers done. come through here all we see is bloodshed. Yes, well, adventurers are the bane of our existence here. We are also the reason we do exist. Well, we, me and my group here, have gone and killed many goblins, orcs, and hobgoblins, and the undead to help keep this small village safe. If that's true. You know, there's a bounty on those animals, those beasts. Yes, yes, we do. You gotta bring <coughs> small paper. You gotta bring those ears. Do you have that? Yeah. So, they keep forgetting. <laughs> since, the like, the page. very first page, since the very first adventure, they have this bounty sheet. Remember, they originally went after that guy who stole Father Ambrose's plate, yeah. and they got the bounty for him. But you have all these other creatures that they'll pay individually for these different parts. Goblin ears, cobalt ears, blah, 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 whatever. Hobgoblin, orc tusks. They keep forgetting to take that stuff for money. It not only gives you money, they'll pay you for killing them, but it also gives you not notoriety. So they've been missing out on that. Um, so yeah, he just reminds you. If you're actually out there doing that, you don't really have any proof. Yeah. You might want to be bringing these in to show the town you're actually doing something. True. Yeah, I gotta put them in the talk. Oh, I'll put it with this. So we remember. You can... You can say all these tales, adventurer, but uh, all I've seen is bloodshed in my town. Mm. Well, if you were to venture to the Claw Mountains, you would see that all those caves are now barren and full of dead gone. I'm not going to the Claw Mountains. Mm. You wouldn't catch me there. Mm. So, what are you doing here? You need some shoes? No, we're looking to see if you could tell us where or if you have any... Uh, people we could hire to help watch over our wagons and horses while we go clear out the dungeons and the uh, caves. Hmm. Well, I don't really know. I mean, it's just me here. Um, you might want to check with, I know that, uh, old Timoth's boys, old Timoth's boys have been known to go out, uh, there are village hunters, they come back with deer and stuff all the time, they know the area, uh, you might want to check with Timoth and see if his sons are in town, they might be able to go with you. Where's Timoth at? So Timoth is that, remember that old, that hunter elf guy that you guys met before? Or he wasn't an elf, but... He's a gruff guy you guys met in the, uh, whatchamacallit. And, um, he lives in 28, I believe. Yeah, 28 is Timoth, the hunter. How do you spell Timoth? T-I-M-O-T-H. But actually, your new characters don't know him. But your original character, Kyle and all them knew. Kyle, him and Kyle had a thing on in the uh, thing. So he knock on the door and he's like, he opens it up. Hello? Uh, are you Timoth? That's me. I'm here to look to see if maybe your boys want to uh, come and, and join me and my friends here on some adventures. Where are you headed? Uh, to the Claw Mountain. Oh, in areas beyond. Who told you to come here? Ah, uh, Slavin. Ah, Slavin. Slavin. Well, 
Let me go see what my boys are up to. He was too scared to leave the village. He whistles. Hey, boys, get in here! And they come up, and you can see his sons are probably 17, 18 years old, but they look like pretty experienced dudes, um, capable young men. These, uh, these adventurers here have a proposition for you. Let's see. Uh, Yo, yeah, well, I'm Vince, and uh, I'm Brennan. So Vince and Brennan are his sons. So, you got business? Yes, we would like to see if you fine boys would like to uh, join us on our adventures. And nothing too crazy, you know, while we go up clear out the mountains and fight all the big monsters. You just kind of hang out with the, uh, the horses in the camp and make sure everything is fine and dandy. Make sure there's no invaders. Nothing like that. Nothing too serious, nothing too dangerous. Mm. You're heading to Claw Mountains. And areas That's... beyond. You're talking danger there, man. Trust me, we'll keep you out of out of harm's way. I mean, typically people hire us for our scouting services. Uh, we know a lot of the lands. If we're going to go out there, it's going to cost you uh, a good three gold piece per day each. And that's gonna, we're gonna be scouting services, uh, as I don't want to be getting into combat. If we, if we get into combat, it's gonna cost you extra, double that day. Every day we get into combat, it's gonna cost you double. Because we're not, we're not fighters, we're trackers, we're hunters. Mm. Do you we know, hunt, we hunt animals, not orcs. Do you know anybody in the village who would be okay with just kind of hanging out at the camp? For you gotta a while? check them dwarfing brothers. Dwarf you know, brothers. You know Kim McAlebeard? Hammock Elbeard. No, I do not. Don't know if I've heard of him so far. I think your other character. Remember the rowdy, drunk dwarf in the town that was bothering you guys? And Nora was like, leave him alone. He's real drunk. Anyway, you've met, I think maybe it was your older characters. So, they, uh, the three dwarven brothers own a brewery. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they're at the brewery. Yeah, 21. Brewery. 21 Brewery, yeah, that's Kimmick's Brewery. So, you go over there and uh, none of them are actually, no answer. No answer. Well, I guess we need but, to go to the pub then and see if they're there. Yeah, you actually turn around and you can hear the sound of laughter and everything. The pub's right next door and you can hear something's going off in the tavern. Go investigate. Yeah. We open up the door, and there's your three dwarves. Kimmix, as usual, drunk as heck, up on top of a table, telling a story. His two brothers are down beneath, and they got a couple of the townsfolk all in them, and they're just having a jolly good time. And you can see Atro and uh, uh, Atro and uh, Hayden have already taken a liking to these three dwarf brothers. Hey, Kimmix. Yeah. Yeah, I want to. Man, I got a proposition for you, you and your brothers. Plenty of space to dance in. Fellow dwarf, of... this guy's on. Hold on. Oh, okay. Hey, dwarf. Mm. You want a beer? Thank you. Dwarf. I know you want a beer. No, I can't. Thank yeah. you. What kind of dwarf? Declines a beer. My friend here is a cleric. He has taken out oaths not to drink any of the apple juice. Mm. You like grape juice. Here you go. Ah, grape juice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we want to see if you boys would like to uh, follow us on some adventures. All you need to do is just hang out at the camp all day while we go out and fight people. All you need to do is hang out. Oh, you get to go out and fight, but we don't. Well, there may be people who want to try to rob us while we're away, that you're there to protect it. Drink as much beer as you would like, Kimmick. That's fine. Have as much fun as you would like as well. It's just hang out, watch well, the stuff, tend well, the horses. Hold on. We got a business to run. We can't be leaving our brewery for too long. All right. I'll go with you. Oh no. But they're gonna have to stay. I'll go with you. Just me. But it'll cost you. These fine. You see these guns? Mm. That's gonna cost you. Mm. You see that hammer there? Mm hmm. I'm better than him with it. Mm. <clears throat> Mm. You think so? You want to hire me? He's like flexing his muscles, drunk. It's gonna cost you mm -hmm. 
three gold pieces a day. And I'm the best guard there ever was. And there better be some fighting to be had. Mm. If there's no fighting, you're charged. I'm charging extra. I want to fight something. All right, well, if you lose to my friend here in an arm wrestle, you'll bring that down to one gold piece a day. And you'll fight for free. Is this true? I've been known. Uh -oh. uh. Okay, so you're going to roll an opposed strength check. So you don't have uh, any strength. You just have a zero modifier. So you're just going to roll that straight. Let's see what you get. So you got a 14. Darn it! Darn it! So he uh, doesn't have a strength modifier either. A two. two. And you beat his butt. <laughs> ah. I guess that he gets a two for being drunk. I guess. <laughs> Good job, Grandpa. Yeah, Peter. it's only because my drink. Two gold piece? Come on. <laughs> no, you agreed at one. Fine. But there better be fighting to be had. Oh, there will be fighting. Okay. So. We'll park you up right next to the cave. So you're definitely hiring Kimmick Alebeard. Yes. Okay, so you got Kimmick. And he is going to go for one gold piece a day. And apparently we'll charge you more if there's no fighting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, there well, you he's go. Gonna so he's trying he, to charge us more for no fighting? Yeah, it free. might be tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, he's like, if I'm going on an adventure, I need to fight something. Yeah. So he's expecting to actually have to fight something. But he's not going to go into the dungeons and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, no, he'll be, he'll serve perfectly as a camp guard. Yeah. Well, you only need the one, so I guess then I guess maybe maybe one more. But well, you got one camp guard. Um, so you uh, you start to talk about this adventure, and some other people come up. They're like, "So are you guys headed to the Claw Mountains?" Yeah, I'm ready to the Claw Mountains, uh, rid the mountains of the uh, goblins, bugbears, all the evil things you know of. And we, after that, we plan on going to other other areas to help rid the world of evil. Mm. That Pilor's, sounds like a fun adventure! In Pelor's name. You see two younger kids, probably 15 and 16. That sounds like a fun adventure! Grandpa Eldir always talks about his adventures. It's time for us to go on an adventure. This is our chance! And these mm. two two boys come up, and they're apparently Eldir's grandsons, and uh, they want to join you. Eldir is the um, wacky old guy. Oh yeah! Okay, I was like, I remember that name. Yeah, he's the old guy that uh, identified Teaches some of your magic items. Yeah, he's trying to remember yeah. which number he was. He's on there somewhere. Eldir's house is twenty four A. Oh, there it is. Um, and he also has potions as well. Um, well, for such novices as yourself, if you want to join. Yeah, we'll go. Um, what's, what's, what's the common rate? One gold piece a day for both of us? But we don't, we don't really want to fight, but uh, we'll take care of your gear. We'll make sure everything stays uh, nice and organized. We'll, feed, we'll help feed the horses. Uh, we'll be of help. We just want us to go on an adventure. Well, as seeing as how I need... We'll set up your tents. We'll, set, we'll take care of the fires. I need more fighters, but... To help get you the experience, I'll bring you along. For now, as journeyman, free of charge. And then, we'll get you trained with Kimmick here. And then eventually... You'll probably want to fight. Whoa. Can we just have one gold each just to start? All right. Not let's every see. day, but can we just have a gold just signing on fee? Well, <clears throat> I think what we'll do is for now until I see fit, we'll give you five gold each or per for both of you to go show off to your friends and let them know you're going on an adventure. Make sure you buy something nice. At least so poke. Okay, that's good. So you're giving them money to go actually gear themselves up a little bit. Okay. They're like, oh, wow. Let's go see what uh, Blacksmith has. So they take the gold and they'll be like, so when are we leaving? We'll come find you. All right. Well, we'll be ready. So uh, his son, Gordon, 
from Gink. Eldier Sons. So you gave them uh, no per day. You gave you already paid for them. They're not going to charge you per day. They're not they're inexperienced. Okay, so you have two camp hands just for like setting fires, taking care of the camp, making sure your tents are pitched, uh, your bed rolls are dry, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then you got Kimmick, who's actually going to guard the thing. Uh, do you think you need anything else? Uh, you also hear... You need potions, but... You see a guy with, with a hood on, and he, he lowered first his hood. If you guys are going out there, you're going to want a guard dog with a good nose. Hmm. And I got the one. I'll go with you. Three gold piece a day, me and my guard dog. We'll make sure nothing sneaks up on us. Everyone get a good night's sleep. My dog will make sure we're alerted. So you don't have to stay up all night guarding the camp. My dog will do that for us. I can fight, too. Let's say you, McCorgle. Ah! It seems like a reasonable price for the safety of a whole night. I agree. Alrighty. Three gold pieces. You've got uh, me, Gren, and my pit bull, Colo. Mm. I would agree upon this. Yes. All right. So, Gren and Colo, and they're gonna go three gold piece a day. Uh, so he can fight, and his guard dog will also like patrol around and make sure nothing sneaks up. Um. He is from, you, you talk to him a little bit more and you learn that he lives in one out here and he breeds dogs. He breeds hunting dogs. And, uh, How do you spell his name? Gren. G-R-E-N-N. -N. Okay. And he's a um, dog breeder? Yeah, breeds, breeds dogs. For all kind of purposes, but mostly hunting dogs. Guard dogs. Alright. Um... You got uh, anyone here that's going to take care of them horses, or are you guys going to take care of them? We got the boys. Okay. The two boys will take care of the horses. We'll feed them, take care of them, do what needs to be done. Alright. So we got uh, two young lads. Kimmick here. I have known Kimmick for a while. When he's sober, he's a good fighter. He's like, I'm a good fighter when I'm drunk, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm thinking we might need one more if we're headed out to the Kuala Mountains. It's dangerous out there. What do you have in mind? Uh, let's see if I know anybody. Who else might be able to help us? I don't... I honestly don't know. It's up to you. If you guys can find more... It might help, but you know what? Me and Kimmick here, I bet I reckon we could take care of it. But uh what so when are we headed out? Gotta make sure my dogs are ready to go. Oh we'll uh we'll come and find you. A couple days, a couple days. We'll be leaving in a few days. Alright, so you're gonna have Kimmick is a guard. Gran is a guard. And then you got two camp hands. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got four men and a dog, plus your gear. That's going to pretty much fill up your wagon, but that works out perfect. So you guys can toss all your gear on the wagon and stuff, uh, whatever, and you'd be good to go there. Uh, and and Gren, Gren says, um, yeah, and I, I can drive the wagon. I, I'm, I can drive the wagon. You don't need to worry about hiring anybody else for that. So, yeah, I'll follow behind with the wagon. And then we need to go to, um... We can go to Eldir and get some health potions, or, uh... Or actually, we'll Father go to... Ambrose. Call the Father Ambrose. Yeah, we'll go to the chapel. So, did you read that, uh, Channel Life ability that I gave you? Yeah, I know his. Oh, I read his. his. It's the same. So yeah, mine's just both one. Have it. Yeah. yeah, you're only doing once right now, so you get a free... So that's basically a little bit of health. 
you can do once a day that uh, doesn't cause any um, the spell doesn't burn a spell. So you have your spells plus that. No one has any health potions left, yeah, do they? Yeah, that's, no, that's why I was like, we need to go buy some health potions real quick. Yep, so, um... No, you kind of, you guys are new. Too. You guys are not the original group. Um, and... Well, should we go feed the deer? Oh. I, I'll do it. Okay. Um... So Father Ambrose is going to charge you the original 225 rate. Even for me? Well, for you me? guys got yourself into a bit of some embarrassing trouble for the, the church, and he's not actually happy about that. Mm. Even though it, it just brings a little bit of shame, even though you guys were technically innocent. Uh, Father Ambrose isn't too happy about bringing that kind of uh, controversy to the church. the church. He doesn't like seeing his clerics getting involved in stuff like that. Mm. It shouldn't even be a thing around this cleric, so he's going to charge you 225. What about my merchant skills here? He says, uh, you know, well, it's going to be 225 for the uh, health potions, and I only have two of them on me. Well, we'll take them but, both, then, um, I'll tell you what, I'll give you guys all, uh, your boys that are, are injured, I, I can give them a healing spell. I got two healing spells left for today. I am an alchemist mm -hmm. on the side, so if we have enough of materials that we're taking with us, I find on the way, yeah. yeah. Make some so, I'm going to have to come up with some something to do. So, being that you're a cleric and you're an alchemist, I would say that you're going to know a way to make a health potion. But i got to figure out, there's got to be interesting ingredients. Like, usually when you do something like that, you're going to need to find something very specific to be able to make that. And it should come down to being a liquid because it's quicker and easier. Yeah, and well, it, even mortar and pedestal probably, too, to crush up the herbs. Well, you are. That, and, and you have the and water it, and the vial. And it might also need, like, the blood of something evil or, or so, like, yeah. something, something like, it might need something else. I, I'm going to have to figure that out. But for now... We could find. We could probably find some of like the herbs, or whatever, on like the goblins or whatever we kill too, probably as well, as like a RNG type thing. Mm. Instead of like, I'm gonna have to look into that. Foraging into the woods for. You know, it's got to be something pretty hard to get though, like it, like a magical creature. <laughs> there, there's got to be like magical creatures that like you use something of like maybe they're like something. I gotta look into that because I've never come across that where there might be a cleric that can make potions because usually a cleric that makes potions is gonna make healing potions. Yeah. So I need to figure out a cool recipe that you guys can look for those ingredients and then you can roll to see what well, you're gonna do a roll to see if you're able to do it and if you don't do it then you waste your your you mess up your ingredients yeah. but you can try again if you find more. But, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll work on that, but maybe there's going to be something out there that you guys can build, mm. and you can make some health potion, potentially. But for now, you don't have any. Father Ambrose has two on you, and they, they're down healing, so Atro's good. Um, I know he has... Hayden's uh, down. Two, three, four, five, six. So, he'll give him 1d6 plus 1, so five points back. Plus the one point because they uh, slept the night. So he's four health. That's four health. Okay, so he raised those really good. And you're down as well, aren't you? No, I'm, I'm fully healed. You're full? Yeah. You're full, and he's full. <laughs> Bless you. Okay, so everyone's full. Yeah, we just want to buy two health, the last two health potions then. Okay, so give, it to, give it to Corbin. 25, so that's 550. Yeah. 450. Yes, correct. 450, sorry. So I'll have 40 gold. Plus, so I figure we'll give um, we'll give it give one to Corbin and one to uh, a tro. Of healing. And that weighs 
five pounds. No, you guys are all heavy weight by the way, so yeah. if you Which is a good thing we all got the horses. Yeah, so you should be able to unload some of your stuff if you don't want to bring it into the dungeon. But a lot of it is you're just uh, your armor weighs a lot. <coughs> What'd you do with this goal? I risked it. Why? Uh, well, never mind. It's you didn't have it. That's his personal goal from his new character. She told me to leave, give him some sorts. Told him some sorts. Well, you didn't leave. You took everything that Trowbridge had, but I just gave the new character some money. Yeah. So have two health potions. You guys each have a little bit of healing magic you can do, plus your pr prayers. Um, so, you, you can cast three zero level spells per day and three first level spells per day. Yeah. Plus, <coughs> once a day you can do your channel life prayer and give two hit points back to a friend. Um, so based on whatever you have here, each day you go out and adventure, so it takes about a half hour for praying to be able to prepare all your spells, and you're basically praying to your god, your god is Morden, the dwarven uh, god, and you're basically pleading with him to give you the powers to get through the day in a holy way, and you basically, whichever ones you want to do, you write down the ones you prepare and how many. You guys want anything? No, thank you. I'm anything? good. Thanks. Thomas, you need anything? No, I'm good. Okay. So, um, you and Corey are both clerics, so I printed them out. Uh, she, you, you have this, though. The spells didn't change. Yeah. So, your spells that you have that I printed you out are still good. The same. Okay. So, you guys can coordinate together what spells you guys want to cast, because... You can ca you can prepare anything on your list. Yeah. Like a like a magic user like Alicia, a wizard doesn't get all of those. Like they have to learn each individual spell. So she might be able to cast a few a day, but she actually has to learn each spell. So she only knows a couple spells. But you guys know your entire sheet. Uh, but you're able, you're able to. So there's your first. So you get three of those. And you can do three of one, or you can spread them out however, and you get three of these. So whenever you guys go to adventure, you guys, before you head out in the morning, do your prayer and mm -hmm. help him prepare the spells that you guys think is going to be good for that day. Um, and then... Which one we play next when we meet up? Um, I'll just go through the spells and be like, listen, these are the ones I think we should get. Like, at least, well, at least can choose two. Yeah. Like, I know you should have at least two healing spells, or at least one extra healing spell, because I know I have two. You know, he can cast a little bit more than you can, so you can yeah. do... I have, I have three spells, but, um, yeah, I have one first level and two, uh... And you got three Orisons and three, so I have those together. So actually, both of you can cast the same amount, because you have a higher wisdom. What's your wisdom? Uh, plus two, seven. Yeah, so his is 15. So your your wisdom gives you extra bonus spells. So even though you're a level behind, you can cast the same amount. Okay, but his channel behind. life prayer is better than yours. Yeah. So he can probably have, like, just do one healing spell and the rest can be... Because you also have... So your zero level healing spells is just one hit point. Mm -hmm. Your first level healing spell does a d6 plus one. So if you cast a zero level... Spell, they only get one hit point no matter what. If you cast your first level one, they get that plus one. That's a bad roll, but potentially up to seven hit points back. So the first level spells are much better. But then you also have those other ones. You can get creative with your other spells. I haven't even read through them, so when you cast them, they're going to be a surprise to me. Well, that's that's why a lot of them, like, whenever I did the cast light, I also did the thing where I could blind them, and then yeah. um, also, because I know I did one of them, and he read through those spells too, so you know the spells better than I do, because I haven't, 
I don't really play, so I don't really need to know all of them. Yeah. I just, whenever you cast them, I give it a quick read so I understand how they work. Yeah. So, like, my protection from evil, like, if we're going against, like, somebody, but for if I do with reverse, which is protection against good, good. you have to determine who's good or, you, like, if You're not going to be able to do that because your, your god doesn't want to protect you from good because you are yeah. good. Your god wants to protect you from evil, so that spell will work. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, evil like clerics. Can, oh, yeah. yeah, evil clerics would cast protection from good. Yeah. Or I could do, like, guidance. I could do the guidance or, like, the opposite to an enemy, which would be the minus one to attack and stuff. So. Yeah. I, I'll look, you know more about that than I do. So it, use your spells however you want to use them, and I'll read it at the table and see. And just make a call. Yeah. Um, so... Anything else that you guys wanted to... No, I think we're good. No, to be honest. Because we don't need more gold anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're out of gold now. Right? Yeah, we only have 40 gold altogether. So, keep in mind... So there's your equipment and services. Uh, so technically, what you guys hired aren't really retainers. They're just regular people. But you have to treat them right, because I'm going to treat them like retainers. It's like... You know, they, they're going to make morale checks. If something happens, they make a morale check to see their loyalty to you guys. Like, if they're getting overrun by stuff, mm -hmm. and you guys aren't helping them or something, and they're like, you know what, I've got to get home to my family. Like, they're going to bail on me. Mm -hmm. So they'll how do we know if we're in, the, like, a cave or something like that, like, if they're being overrun by something? Uh, I'll be reasonable with that. Okay. But, like, if you guys have a decision and you screw them over, they're going to take a less, well, they're going to be less loyal to you. Okay, I got you. So, like, if something happens on the road or something, depending on how you handle them, you know, that's when their loyalty comes into it. But generally, when you guys are in the caves, I'm not going to screw you guys over. Okay. Um, so, in the introduction part of the new bit, there's a new rule, rule on here that I added. So, experience points. You level up. There's different ways to do it, but... So, you don't have to kill monsters to get... So, originally in the game, and the way all D&D works, technically, is you kill monsters, you get XP. But, it doesn't really reward overall playing. It just rewards killing monsters. So, what I do is, if you have gold, and you can find a trainer, you can buy training at a rate of one gold to X one XP. So, if you wanted to just buy XP, you find a trainer... So, like, Father Ambrose could train you, because you're a cleric of Palor. He'd probably even train you, because he can teach you magic, the spells. So if you guys wanted to learn your cleric stuff, you go to Father Ambrose, pay him. If you wanted to learn 40 XP, you got 40 gold, extra gold change, you toss it to him and add the XP to your sheet. Okay. And he, so it takes a little bit of time, so... Purchasing training is a primary way to accumulate XP. If a trainer is available, money and or treasure collected on adventures may be used as payment at a rate of one gold piece to one XP. Trainers may include weapon experts, priests, elder magic users, or other people qualified to teach a certain character class. It takes one day of training per 100 gold piece earned. So if you're only training for 40, gold, or 40 XP, you don't need a full day. So you can probably do that in half day. But if you're going to do like 300 gold piece... If you want to buy 300 XP, it's going to take three days of training. So you want to stay in the town for a few days. You know? Also, killing monsters, you can still earn you can still earn XP by killing monsters. Um, and then when you guys travel through the wilderness, basically every hex that you transfer travel through, you get some XP. Technically, in your adventure, you're only in one hex. My, my world map is massive. Mm -hmm. So that's more for if you're traveling across the I'd say it's, it's kind of like when you, like, whenever yeah, you... You're uh, not really going to get this one. I'd say it's kind of like when you're in Skyrim, you, like, discover Honeywood you're, or something like that. Or like you get Lord of the experience. Rings, where you're going across the continent. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, so really, this is all one hex on my world map. This is a tiny little area. Yeah. So you're not going to get too much XP for just general exploration. Yeah. Um, but this way... The purchasing training things allows you guys to... It doesn't incentivize just killing. Like, if you wanted to just steal, like, sneak around and steal the gold, you can still use that for XP without having to kill them. Like, if you come across a dragon's hoard, you can get creative and steal his treasure and get gold pieces without having to kill the dragon. So... Or, like, even those... those Gems. I mean, technically, you could trade those gems. That's five hundred. That's five hundred XP. 
So it's five days of training, 500 XP, that gold piece gem, 500 gold piece gem. So keep that in mind. If you guys ever have extra money laying around, which you usually don't because you guys always need freaking potions, healing potions. Yeah. But if you guys can be smart about using your, staying out of trouble, getting out of, and spending time it's in camp. Hard. Yeah, I was saying the only thing we're gonna do is when we get low, we're gonna have to get out of the, get out of the cave or whatever. Oh, that's another thing you need. You guys need to be doing rations. You need for food. Yeah. So I know why I have like four days of food or whatever. So. So, but every day you guys gotta check that off, and and also when we're in town, you gotta pay for your food and stuff. I'm not gonna do that now, but. From now on, like I'm, I'm gonna be a little bit more strict with that. Uh, it's gonna be huge. Well, of our here's your rations. So one day a ration is two gold pieces and weighs two pounds. So that's like MREs. Yeah. Um, elephant whey bread you're not gonna be able to find here. That's down south. But that's like that's like the bread of Lord of the Rings thing. Special bread. But yeah. Every day of rations costs two gold. So, I don't know how many days. You had a few days. Yeah, you have seven days of rations on you. But now that you guys have a cart, you guys can leave your rations on the cart and not have to carry them because they're heavy as heck. Two, two gold, two pounds. So, the boys have... How much rations do they have? I don't know. Well, they might have some. I must, if you added some, they will. Yeah, I would have. I, I updated their sheets. I have... Uh, Four rations. So you have four days. Uh, he has. They have four. Let's see, it's like, it's four, and he has seven. So. Seven. Sure so seven. you guys might want to go to the general store and buy a few, because that's each day each of you needs to eat a ration. So if you guys are out there like and you get beat up, you know, it might you might be you need to just hang out at camp for three days. There you go. You just burn three of your rations. Yeah. So but it's up to you. I mean, you got some of them out four days, but so keep in mind, just the travel here is gonna probably take you a day. Usually that would be two. That would take you two two and a half days on foot. But now that you have the horses, you'll be able to get there in a day. But you're still gonna need to eat a ration on the road. So you're gonna be down one ration immediately. And we don't have to go off the end there, right? No. It's okay. You guys are welcome to go wherever you want. Um, but the general adventure is just in this valley. Yeah. But th it's an open world. Well, I mean, earlier we were talking about having to go off or something. Well, that was, he was just telling you about the town, just okay. for general knowledge. He was letting you know that there is a big town this oh, way, okay. if, if you ever wanted to go out that way. So... So two gold, two gold pieces so, each day. You're probably good with your seven days. He's he's going from four to seven, and you buying three more days for him as well. Mm -hmm. So all of you guys are going to be on seven days ration. So okay. rations, and I'll try to keep you up to date with that. But uh, and remind me if I forget. But basically, every day you're out there, we got to check off a ration. Okay. Because food is a thing. You got to eat. Yeah. So. Well, party fun. So it was seven days. Everyone. And then you have a water skin on you. Um, each water skin has a day of water, but generally it's assumed that you guys are looking for fresh water. And honestly, if you're going on an adventure like this, you're going to bring a big tub of water in the wagon anyway. So I'm not going to make you worry about water so much, unless you go down in a dungeon. If you're down in a dungeon for like three days in a row, there's not going to be many much water down there potentially, so you will run out of water, so you got to yeah. keep going on that. So, and if you run out of food, if you don't eat for a day or, or whatever, you start to take negatives and you start to lose health and stuff. So, obviously we're humans and dwarves, we gotta eat. So, um, so there's all the gear and stuff. 
There's all the character building, so that's got your stuff. This is all the adventure rules, so there's the food and water rules, like I just said. Death and dying, so... How death works, if you... So you have hit points. So your hit points is your health. You have 11 hit points. So someone rolls against you and say they hit. And say he rolls a d8 for damage. You just took two points of damage, now you're down to nine. So what, what we usually do is use these as your health, so you can just check off two of those, and now you know you have nine left. Okay. When you get down to zero, then you start checking these. These are negative hit points. It goes to negative ten. If you get to zero and less, you can't really attack or anything. You're basically knocked out. You can move at half speed, but you can't really do anything else except for, like, crawl at half speed. You can't attack or anything like that. Uh, so someone needs to bandage you, or, and if you're down there, you're going to keep losing it per round until someone stabilizes you. So, if you're down here, every round you're going to lose some more until you die. When you get to negative ten, you're dead. If you're down at negative five and Corey comes up and either uses his healing prayer or his healing spell, or he can just come up to me, come up to you and say, I stabilize him with some bandages, you take a round, you don't need to do a spell or anything, but it just stops you. It stops you from losing hit points anymore. So you won't keep losing hit points. It'll just stabilize you where you're at. So What can I do for myself since I'm a cleric? You can cast a spell on yourself. If you have healing spells, you can cast a healing spell on yourself, but your channel life prayer can only be done on other people. So if you have healing spells, you can like say, Morden, please help me, and, and heal yourself. Uh, or you can drink a health potion. You guys have two health potions now. I think the boys are carrying them. Mm -hmm. So those, you don't have to burn a spell. You just drink, and you get four hit points back, because it's 1d6 plus 1. But you have to use those wisely, because the boys get hurt. So <laughs> mm -hmm. and you guys got to remember, go in there. If you get injured, and you didn't tore up, back out. Go to because the rest. natural healing, you only get one health back a day. So if you come back and rest the night, you're only getting one back. Plus the spells and channel lights you guys have. But without clerics, you're only getting one health back. So if you take seven points, that's a week of healing you need before you're back full. So you guys gotta be smart. Like it's or resource at least a day, management. So that way I can at yes. least heal. Yeah, you can, and you can use, say like, say you guys get injured and you pop out. If you have spells left, you toss them on there. If they're still down hit points, you can say we rest the day. The next day, they're going to get the one back, and then now you guys have fresh healing again. So then you can cast your stuff on them again. Mm -hmm. If they still need it, you can wait another day. Oh, look. The downside of that is you're going to use more rations the longer you need, and you have chance of being ambushed or something like that. So... The longer you're in the wilderness or in the dungeon, I'm rolling random encounters. So, the longer you're there, the more likely you are to something's coming. So, it's not always safe. Like, I, every so often I roll a die to see if something comes. So, that's the downside. You can wait all you want, but I'm going to roll for random encounters, and you're going to get rid of your food. So, it's resource management out in the wilderness. Yeah. But now you guys have a good home base, and you don't have to come all the way back. You just yep. set up your camp, clear that goblin tribe, and then you got a good home base, and you can just go everywhere and come back to your camp. That's a good location. That's smart. Uh, that's a good central location for the whole that valley there. If you come up in here, you might want to go somewhere else, but for this area, that's a good spot. Central location. That's probably only... So every one of these hex is a mile. One, two, three, four, five. So you guys as both characters, you're heavy loaded. Uh, ten feet per round. Six miles per day. So you can go six of these per day. One, two, three, four, five, six. So a day's walk. If you guys were here, it's a day to here. Two days up into here. So still you guys are going to be walking a little bit. Because so, you guys are all really slow.
Unless you ride your horses up in there. If you ride your horses up in there, it'd be a lot faster. You can get all the way up in there. But then you have your horses unguarded. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you if you want to leave your horses at the camp or ride them in to get up there. Just a trade off. I would just probably still probably leave them in there because that way at least they're protected. Well, is there any benefit to ride the horses up as close as we get to where we well, want to go and leave a guard? Leave a guard with the horses? Leave up to get someone with us, yeah. We can do that, yeah. <coughs> it would cost us a man, but it would preserve it. So you'd have a fight. If you do that, you're going to have one fighter at your camp, one fighter with the horses. A little bit thin. Might want to consider hiring another fighter if you're going to do that, or another guard. Uh, <coughs> but it's not a bad idea. That, that would definitely make it easier to travel through here. Because if you guys are walking, if you're camping here and walking up in here, it's going to take a couple days to get yeah, up into these mountains. That's, that's way too much. Yeah, well, at least if we can at least clear out the goblins, we can probably afford to buy another guy. That's where we right. start. That's where our first emphasis is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we clear that, we can move the camp from where we are to there. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's how you play yeah. the game there, Corey. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just think logically. It's not like a video game where you can only have certain things. You can do whatever. Well, it's, I mean, your, I your limit is how you plan. Well, I was, you know, very controlling the whole thing, but, you know. Oh, I, I know. But the kids. Uh, yeah, well, now that you have help, the thing is, it's just been you with the kids, so I've been easy on you. Now you got two adults. I'm going to make you guys start actually thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I've been easy on him because he's had to deal with the kids by himself. Yeah, I know. And when we were trying to tell him how to attack, attack, and do all this other stuff, and he's like, just let, just let the play. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we'll start dialing it in a little bit more realistic now. Yeah. It would be like an old war game, strategy, yeah. how we want to do it. Yeah. That's a good plan there, because you can get in here, set up camp, clear that, then move the camp into the goblin cave. Yeah. And, and then, then you get the protection of the cave. Right? And then if you clear out the hobgoblin cave, mm -hmm. potentially you move the camp move up again. Yeah. However you want to do it. Yeah. And then we know that the... You might run into trouble doing that, but it's a good idea. Yeah. Who knows? You never know where the adventure will take you. No. Alright. You guys are good? You don't need anything else? No, Any we're, questions? We're leaving this grant, right? I'll take this back and see. You got a chance to go through these a little bit? Grant? I did. I, I, yeah. I mean, didn't have the knowledge at the time of going through just yeah. from what we did tonight. You don't, you don't have but to, I was, you know... Yeah, you don't have to memorize it all. It's just yeah. to get an idea. I'm the one that has to know really all the rules and stuff. Yeah. But you guys will... You learn as you go. OJT. So. Oh,